We're glad to have you back today with Woodworking with Wes. On a recent Instagram post, we showed these two doors that I had made and was taking to a client for their approval. She liked them both. So we put this on one vanity and this on another. So today on our video, we're going to show you how we made these two doors. They're miter door corners, but there's a reason that we do miter door corners. We're gonna show you all the tricks and how we did it and why. Okay, we're getting ready to build our two doors, our miter doors, that we had uh, samples made for our customer. We actually had several requests from our Instagram post from people who wanted to know how we did this and the process that we went through. That's why we're making our video today. The first thing we need to do is to make our style and rail stock. Now, we do mitered corners because of, let me lay this board down, details that allow that that only allow you to do a mitered corner one of the details that is like that is a, a bead cut in the face of a style and rail stock you can't do a bead cut after you do if you do a, a typical cope and stick or style and rail set uh, on a shaper you can't do a bead cut because it doesn't go all the way through so you have to do that um, on a lineal stock and then do a miter door. And that's one of the reasons you end up making miter doors for some jobs and style and rail stocks for others, is it has to do with the profile. This particular profile requires that we do a mitered door. And so the first thing we have to do before we get started on everything is we have to go through and make our style and rail stock. And we make it in lineal stock so that we can miter it afterwards. So there's a lot of router work. This particular door, has one, two, three pieces that make up the style and rail, or the, or the uh, rail stock. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go through, and we're gonna show you how we do all this, how we glued up this piece, how we made it, and uh, then we'll miter it and put it together in a door. This door is a single frame, but again has the bead cut that requires it to be a mitered cut, because this bead cut can't be put on afterwards, it has to be done in the course of making a lineal stock. That's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to go through and make our bead and then we're going to go through and make the rest of our cuts and put our rail stock style stock together and then do our miters. We'll get started with the routers first. We're getting ready to route our uh, style stock. We have set up a small trim router with a quarter inch bead router bit. Um, this bid bit allows us to make a bead. Now typically on a router on a router you route the end like that, but that gives us our bead in the wrong place. We're going to be routering like this. That is hard to keep that straight. So what we've done is we've taken our style and rail stock and we've clamped several pieces together. You can see where I've already made my preliminary cut to get the depth and everything. That gives us something more substantial to run our plate against as we do it. So that's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and route all of our rail stock with our bead cut. We're going to do that now. Okay, we've routed our two outside pieces. We'll take that now and we'll put those to the inside and put our other pieces on the outside and route those. And then we'll have four pieces routed with our bead at the end of it and have good stable support for our router. That's how we do that. Okay, we'll get that done. Okay, we've completed our bead portion of route that we have to do for our styles. We're now going to do an additional route that goes around the outside of our fancier doors. It's an OG cut. We're going to be using my brand new D-handled Porter Cable Horse and Three-Quarter router that I got. 
I've used a lot of routers over the years. This is my favorite. This is the best router for cabinet shop use that I've ever run up against. It's easy to hang on to. It's just an excellent router. I just love this router. Okay, we've completed the beading on our lineal stock. Now we're going to go over to the table saw and put the groove in to accept the panel and a little chamfer cut. A little chamfer cut is just a little bevel and, and we're gonna make this door first. So this is what we're doing. Is our, This is our simpler door and it, it is just a one piece style and rail stock and it has a little bit of a chamfer and then the groove to accept the panel. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go over to the table saw and we're going to put the groove in and then the chamfer in and then we'll be ready to miter the corners and make the door. Okay, we're at our table saw. This is where we're going to cut our groove and our groove is going to be a quarter of an inch. We're going to use a quarter inch veneer panel and we're going to make the groove. This is a little sample piece that tells me to uh, make sure that I have space for my panel. But we're going to make it so that the panel fits in and then we'll go back after we have our groove in and make our little chamfer cut. And we're going to do all this on lineal stock and then we'll do our miters. Okay, we've completed the groove in our style and rail stock. Now we're going to go back and put a little bevel. I've set the saw at 22 and a half degrees and we're going to take just a little chamfer or a little bevel off of this edge right here. Now one thing to keep in mind as you're doing these doors make sure that your groove allows your panel to slide in there because as you glue it up your panel needs to be able to be loose enough to adjust the corners as you clamp up and you'll see that when we get ready to clamp up our our door you clamp from four directions. It's a little trickier to clamp up a, a miter door, um, but we'll show you how and we'll show you why it needs to be able to slide a little bit, allows you to clamp up a little better. But anyway, we'll go back and do the bevel now. And all we're gonna do is we've just set the, like I said, we've set the saw at 22 and a half degrees. We're gonna um, take just a nibble off of the inside of our style and rail set there our lineal stock. So we're going to do that now. Okay, we've got that done. Our next step is to cut our miters. Okay, we're getting ready to miter our style stock and style and rail stock into our doors. The one nice thing about uh, mitered corner doors, our door is going to be 18 by 11 and a half, and you just measure the outside. So our, our styles will be 18, and our rails will be 11 and a half, and mitered in. Now, we built this jig for our table saw to give us perfect miters. We actually made a video on our YouTube, so go back, look at our YouTube video on how to build a miter sled. Uh, we just build a real simple little miter sled to help us build these doors. We show you how on our other video, so go back, take a look at that. But we're gonna go ahead and make our miters now, taking our measurements, making our cuts, and then we'll go to the table saw, I mean over to the workbench, and put it together. cut our style and rail stock, but before we assemble our door, we want to sand the inside of our style and rail stock because once we have it put together, it'll be hard to sand this little edge here once it's assembled. So we're gonna sand that beforehand. And we do that very simply with just a sanding block. We sand flat here and our chamfer, our bevel, is also flat, so we just set our block with a little bit of a bevel. And we sand out our saw blade marks like that. We do that sanding all the way through on everything before we assemble. We did the sanding of our style and rail stock. Now we get ready to cut our panel. And the nice thing about cutting our panel is having our, our uh, style and rail 
all made, it tells us the exact size of the panel because all we have to do is measure from long point to long point at the bottom of our groove and that will tell us the size of our panel. The width of our panel will be the measurement on our, our uh, rail stock and the height of our panel will be the measure on our style stock. Now, I want to point out one thing. I made the groove a, dec a little extra deep. In fact, I made it over an inch deep on this. Typically, it would only be three-eighths of an inch on a typical uh, coping stick. But I made it extra deep because the panel actually becomes a, uh, a, a source of holding the joint flat. When you put the joint together and you clamp it, the panel helps hold your joint together, holds your joint flat while you're gluing it. Now, you can biscuit this joint, and I have done before, and, and a lot of people prefer to biscuit their corners as they do uh, uh, mitered corners, but I have just found that making my groove a little deeper and putting my panel in a little deeper is kind of a shortcut. So we're going to go ahead and measure our panel stock, and then we're going to glue it up, and I'll show you the glue up. We have cut our panel now, and we just dry fitted our door together to make sure everything fits nicely. I pre-sanded my quarter inch panel before we put it together because once again we can't sand this after we have our door together. So we pre-sand the pieces that are tight, uh, that are hard to sand after we get the door together. So we pre-sanded our panel, we pre-sanded our inside of our style and rails, and now we're going to go ahead and glue up. But I wanted to dry fit first just to make sure everything fit nice, and sure enough We've got our measurements cut correctly, we've got our panel cut correctly, and it looks to me like our joints are going to go together just fine. And we'll start by gluing up, or setting up our clamps like this. And so I'll just have you watch as I do the glue up. Um, what I do is I set my style and rail uh, set up here. I have my styles on, and I glue the ends of my rails. And I'll do that now and then we'll clamp it up. One little word of advice, don't get too much glue right here at the end because if you have squeeze out in this little uh, groove here along the edge of your bead, that's hard to clean. So I put my glue there to the back side, plenty of glue up front here because that's not a hard thing, a little bit of glue in the, in the groove there but I kind of stay away from my bead because I don't want to have to try to get the glue sanded out of that little bead or out of that little groove. Same thing on this side. Stay away from the end of the bead there. Sand up all your edges. A little bit of glue in the trough isn't a problem or in the groove there. You put this one together on it. Same thing on this side. Now comes the tricky part because you have to glue four directions instead of two directions like you would on a regular coping stick. You would just clamp from here to here, but on a miter door you have to clamp all four ways at once. So. We lay out like this and start clamping like this. And you just kind of work your corners until they're even. And it's uh, kind of a ballet act. So right now we have a little more pressure on the side here. And on this one here, we need a little pressure front to back, so we tighten that way, and then we need a little bit here, and we need a little bit more here, a little bit here, we'll tighten this one up, and you just keep working your clamping until your corners pull together. Sometimes you have to back off and let your corner slide a little bit until... One 
of those things where you just got to pay attention to what you're doing in order to get these corners to come together. And sometimes they don't like to play. But it will. You just keep working it. Keep adjusting your pressure back and forth on your corners until your corners come together. There, we're getting it. That's better. This one's good. We're good here and we're good here. Okay. That was just a little stubborn, but it made it. Okay, we'll let that dry. We'll sand up some of the inconsistencies. We're good on the inside, and that's the place we need to be. Okay, we got this door put together. I had to put one clamp on the corner to pull the corner a little bit, but other than that, it worked together, went together just the way we wanted it to. Like I say, when we get it all dry, we'll go through and sand it all and clean up the corners. But that's how you clamp together. You have to have a clamp on all four corners in order to pull your corners together. And it's kind of a balancing, like I say, it's kind of a ballet to, to pull it all together and get your corners lined up but we're there now. Now we'll work on the other door. This was the first one, now we have one more. All right, we're getting ready to assemble our second door. We're not gonna go through all of the uh, assembly process. Mainly what I wanted to talk to you about was the difference in the way we made the style in order to get a fancier look on the door. The process of cutting the panel and gluing up and clamping our corners is all the same. All we're making different is the profile on our style and rail. And I wanted to show you some of the things that we went through to get this fancier style and rail profile for this other door. And so we started off with our bead, just like we did the last time. We just put a bead on here. But we had a three inch style and rail and this time we started off with a two and a half inch style and rail. So we cut our style and rail down to two and a half inches and then we made a, a, an OG cut. Now we, sh we showed you doing our OG cut and this is our OG cut. And we showed that and we will be applying this OG cut to the outside edge. Now there's a couple of little nuances to this OG cut. First thing we did was on our original bead. Let me get my glasses on here so I can show you. On our original bead cut, we had, get this out of the way so you can see it, we had a step right here. We went over to our table saw and we cut that step away so that we can apply our OG. Now when we ran our OG, we, we made it 5 eighths of an inch thick and we cut it you know, in such a way that it would fit against our rail stock. Now, one of the things that I wanted to show you, a little trick here, we're gonna put this on here, we're just gonna glue it and nail it, but we don't want to have a squeeze out here in this line because that's gonna be very hard to sand. And I'm gonna show you a little trick that a furniture maker showed me years and years and years ago, 25 years ago we put just a little shallow saw cut there. He called it a glue line, and so we'll just call it a glue line. Um, basically what it does is it allows you to glue here, and any squeeze out goes into this little glue line and doesn't come out to the surface of your board. So when you put it there and you glue that surface and you put it against your uh, board and you nail or clamp, you don't get any squeeze out in this area right here that makes it hard to sand. And that creates our new profile. Here's our style and rail stock for our new door. And our piece is attached just like this. We attached it and we just shot some little nails. We used a 23 gauge headless pin and glue and we glued that piece on there and we don't have any squeeze out along that line for us to have to sand. Now there's a little bit of a gap, but this is a, a door that has uh, stain and glaze and our glaze is going to hide 
that. I'm going to turn this around here so you can see this better. But our glaze hides that joint. Now there's a joint right there, just like this joint right here. And you don't even see that joint because the glaze hides the, the actual joint. But that's exactly what we're doing here. We have our bead, we have our groove, and now we have our OG edge all glued on. And that's what is what creates this profile right here. And you create this profile and then you miter it. Now, there's one more application here. This little cut here on the inside. This is a just a quarter inch round over and a little step. And we created that same profile right here. Just like that. Now, we will glue that on after we put our our panel in and we'll put our we'll just set our panel in in here so you can see what we're talking about we'll put our panel in there and after we glue our door together then we'll go back and we'll miter in this little additional molding and so this is what our style and rail will look like at the end of our assembly we'll have our OG cut there's our bead, our panel, I mean our style and rail, and then our little inside decorative we'll put in there, and we'll just put that and attach that with 23 uh, gauge uh, headless pins again, and we'll miter that just like we did here. This is an additional piece that we put in after we did the door, and so that gives us our fancy little profile, and so you can see the same uh, effect. We still mitered our corner together, still a quarter inch panel, but by adding some additional pieces of moldings and mitering them in, we ended up with a very fancy style and rail set on our door. Our customer loved this door. We put this uh, door together and we put it in our in her master bath. One of the things I wanted to uh, make a comment about on the sample door that we did, we made this a little too thin, and when we went to cut our pocket holes, we came through. And so, when we did our door for her uh, bathroom vanity, we made it a little extra chunky here so that when we uh, drilled for our uh, hinges, we didn't come through. And so, pay attention to that. The reason I point that out is because I didn't and I had a problem, but we solved that problem too. And again, like I've always said, part of the success, having a successful completion of a job, is successfully solving your challenges. Anyway, there we are. That's how you do a miter door. We'll sand those other, the other one out, but it's a very simple process of just making sure that you get your profiles correct, make your, your miters right, and doing your glue up, then sand it out. This was a, uh, a unique problem, I, I, a unique door. I am not a, uh, I, I don't do miter doors typically. Typically we do style and rail set, or cope and stick, depending upon how you're, you've been taught to say it. But a miter door is something you need to know how to do because you're going to come up against door style and rail profiles that require a mitered cut because, again, the reason we miter is because of the door profile. You have to be able to have uh, the ability to miter doors when your profile allows you or requires you to do a style and rail miter cut. So. Um, glad you joined me. Uh, this has been a kind of a unique opportunity to show you how to do a miter door and, and some of the things that are required to make the style and rail uh, so that you can miter your doors together. Um, be sure to, to uh, practice on one like this before you uh, sell this to a customer. This is a, a more time consuming and uh, a little more labor intensive application to a t uh, door. So make sure you take that into consideration as you build and as you bid. But 
something you need to know, something you need to learn in order to uh, enhance your woodworking skills and your uh, catalog of skills when you go to sell jobs. Once again, been fun. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time on Woodworking with Wes.